Hello everyone, I am Geeta Kumari, PhD candidate at Michigan State University in collaboration with IIT Madras in India. Today, I am going to talk about a strategy to make turbine blades stronger, which will ultimately help in reducing the cost of flying by developing a bimodal distribution of gamma prime phase in nickel dust superalloy. Let's start with the introduction and background. Do you prefer to fly? I do, but unfortunately, it's costly. The main reason of the cost comes from the fuel. The amount of fuel used in the flight is really high, and that is because of the efficiency of the engine. So to understand with the basic science, the efficiency of an engine can be decided by the input and the output temperatures. And for that, we have an amazing alloy. It's called super alloy used in the engine. Let's understand this here. So this is a flight, and that's where the engine turbine engine comes into. This is how it looks from inside. And this is the zone, is combustion zone, and that's where we use nickel based super alloy. This is one blade. Being a material scientist, we are interested in the tiny structure, and that tiny structures are called microstructures. And this is one of the examples, that's how it looks like. So the nickel based super alloy are used because of their excellent property at high temperature. That's the resistance to deformation, corrosion, and oxidation. And that high temperature can go up to 1150 degrees Celsius. In this work, I have a hypothesis that the bimodal microstructure of this nickel bis super alloy will improve the strength. Let's understand the motivation of this work and how I have come up with this. So here, let's understand this gamma prime precipitate as a hero and this line, those are showing your black colors are dislocations and they're the villain. So they are fighting against each other. Now, in the theory, it's well established that the, in this gamma prime precipitates are fine and small. The dislocation can easily cut and pass through it and it's called shearing mechanism. But when they grow in the size, because of the increase in particle spacing, the dislocations find some space and they can bend around it. And looping is a dominant mechanism here. Now, in this hypothesis that we have, that we will put smaller finer precipitate in between the gap of this larger precipitates. Now, when the dislocation has to move forward, they will not find any space to bend around it. And the only option will be left is shearing. So shearing of the larger precipitate will require more strength and ultimately it will improve the strength of the material. So let's see how it goes in practical. So this is the experiments and the methods. I have taken the alloy from the company and then we have solicinized it. That's, that means we have erased the microstructure that already had it. And then did the step uh, aging treatment. That's two step aging to develop a bimodal distribution. Let's see how it actually looks like. So in the right hand side, you can see this is a bimodal distribution that I've developed, which has a 55 nanometer larger precipitates and the 11 nanometers smaller precipitates. This work has also been compared with the unimodal distribution of first larger precipitates and the smaller precipitates. And after getting the microstructure developed, uh, it was mechanically deformed to develop our dislocations and see how they are interacting with each other using the study of transmission electron microscopy. So this is an example of first unimodal distribution of the larger precipitates you can see very clearly that how the dislocations are actually bending around and looping around. So this is well established in theory and it's matching with it. So the larger precipitates are being looped around. Let's see for the finer precipitates. For the finer precipitate, we can see that the dislocations are actually here in the pair and that means they are actually shearing through the smaller precipitates. So shearing is a dominant mechanism found here. Now, the question is what happens in the bimodal distribution? So let's find it out. In case of bimodal distribution here, we can clearly see using the bright field and the dark field TM images that the dislocations are cutting through it. So you cannot see any of the bending or the looping of the dislocations. So the straight locations are actually a proof of that the shearing is a dominant mechanism here. So shearing of larger and the smaller precipitates are happening. Now let's see the quantitative data of that how much strength has changed for this bimodal distribution versus the unimodal distribution. So to get that, here we have a, we have to conduct a tensile testings. So the orange color curve here is showing the solicinized sample, which means there is no gamma prime precipitates. And after developing different type of distributions here, in case of unimodal and the bimodal, bimodal shows the highest tensile properties. And in the yield strength, it was the highest value here. And after calculating the critical dissolved shear rate also, also, it was found that the bimodal distribution had the highest value, which means it in, has improved the property of the material here. So with that, I would like to conclude that in case of unimodal distribution, the smaller precipitate exhibited shearing as a dominant mechanism and in case of larger looping as a dominant mechanism. But in case of bimodal distributions, shearing was found to be dominant for smaller and the larger precipitates and that is due to the interparticle step spacing reductions. The shearing of the larger precipitate required more strength and hence improved the overall strength of the material here, tensile strength of the material. Now, as a future scope of this work, I would like to bring your attention here that in theory, it's well established empirical formulas that, that can predict 
the dominant mechanism based on the size of the precipitates. So when they're large, looping is a dominant, but that's actually not happening in our case. So there needs to be put attention that bimodal distribution needs to be bring in the empirical formula to predict it correctly. Thank you.